That must be them now. Yes, I think it is. Isn't it beautiful? Man, that's a big car. They say it has a 119 inch wheelbase. It is them. Oh, it's just grand. Congratulations. That's all car. Cleanest lines on the road. It looks, oh, so muscular. How do you like it? The ride is like floating on air. It's so roomy. Pickup? Why, it pushes you right back in the seat. Look at built inside cowl ventilators. This finish is acrylic enamel. I understand you can buff it like lacquer, yet it has the toughness and durability of enamel. Visibility's terrific all the way around. They've done something to the transmission. Doesn't creep when you stop at a light. I'd like to see the station wagon. I just can't believe it's ours. I was sold soon as I drove the first mile. I'm so glad for you. Frankly, I'm envious. Yes, sir, that's a big car. I'll bet a lot of people will buy the station wagon. Yes, the 1965 Plymouth Fury has the appearance, the features, and the obvious quality that breeds enthusiasm on sight. Now, let's take a close look at some of the reasons why our three couples were so enraptured with this Fury 3 four-door hardtop. Isn't it beautiful? No one misses the new beauty of Plymouth Fury. It's clean yet luxurious from every angle. The new greater length is emphasized by the glistening anodized aluminum side molding with its paint-filled center. Twin headlamps are set vertically. The grille is a bright aluminum stamping anodized against corrosion. The top section of the bumper juts slightly forward so another car won't ride over the bumper. It looks oh so muscular. Well, not muscular, perhaps, but lean, built for action. Fury's profile is sharp, crisp, racy. You know, maybe she did mean muscular. The rear view of the Fury is both attractive and highly functional. The top deck surface is level, and this adds to the sturdy silhouette and provides increased luggage space. And the deck lid opening point is low, low, low. As you can see, it's right down on the rear bumper line. And that means a lot less lifting to stow heavy gear in the trunk. This finish is acrylic enamel. I understand you can buff it like lacquer, yet it has the toughness and durability of enamel. Right. Plymouth's new acrylic enamel is buffable. And it has the chip resistance and durability of the finest exterior enamel. And when the car gets older, you can polish it right back to a showroom gloss. Man, that's a big car. They say it has a 119-inch wheelbase. It's so roomy. Right, on all three counts. Not only is the Fury all new for 1965, it comes in an all-new big car size. It's longer and wider overall, with a three-inch longer wheelbase than in 1964. And it is roomier. Roomier for getting in, roomier inside, and there's more room in the luggage compartment. Even the gas tank is bigger. It holds 22 gallons on the wagons and 25 gallons on all other models. The ride is like floating on air. That's torsion air. It's improved for 1965 because the torsion bars have reduced spring rates. Upper control arms have a wider span to reduce load and wear on bushings. The front shocks are nearly vertical for greater efficiency. And a new compression-type front suspension ball joint is now used. Longer, softer rear springs help make the ride easier and more comfortable. 
Because they are not so stiff and rigid, the springs last longer, even under severe service. Rear shock absorbers are now attached to a special cross member that doesn't come in contact with a body floor pan. This prevents road noise from being transmitted to the passenger compartment. Look at built-in side cowl ventilators. Those ventilators are controlled by push-pull knobs that are located on either side of the steering column where they're handy. And the heater is new, with much faster response to the temperature control lever. Visibility's terrific, all the way round. It should be great. The 1965 Fury four-door sedan has 21% more glass area in the windshield and 12% more in the rear window. To keep that huge windshield clean, the wiper blades operate parallel to each other. Each blade is 18 inches long, and the white pattern up on the screen shows you the big area they cover. They do it whisper quiet, too. And curved side glass is featured for the first time in the Plymouth line with the 1965 Fury. The curve blends with the body sheet metal for a smoother, sleeker appearance. Another feature, crank-operated vent windows, is standard on all Fury models. They put an end to pushing and pulling and are a lot kinder to the fingernails of women. They've done something to the torque flight transmission. Doesn't creep when you stop at a light. What they did was change the stator blade design, giving the transmission a higher stall speed. This increase in low speed torque doesn't sacrifice any of the torque flight's great responsiveness. The torque flight range indicator with its park position is an integral part of the instrument panel. The selector lever is mounted on the steering column, except on Sport Fury models, where it is located on the console. Of course, four on the floor is available. Pick up? Why, it pushes you right back in the seat. Prospects can pick their own brand of pickup from a lineup of five great engines. They range from the 225 cubic inch Economy 6 with an 8.4 to 1 compression ratio to a powerful 426 cubic inch V8. The 318 cubic inch V8 with a 9 to 1 compression ratio is the standard 8 on all Furies. This is the engine that has been out in front of its class in the mobile gas economy run five different times. There's a new version of the 383 cubic inch two barrel V8. It has a 9.2 to one compression ratio and it will deliver top performance on regular gas. The optional 383 cubic inch V8 with a 10 to one compression ratio has a four barrel carburetor, special camshaft, unsilenced air cleaner and dual exhaust. It uses premium fuel and delivers premium performance. The 426 cubic inch V8 is equipped like the 383 four barrel, but it has a 10.3 to one compression ratio. And there's a front sway bar on all Furies equipped with either of the 383 engines or the 426. On the instrument panel, there are regular gauges for temperature and alternator and a warning light for oil pressure. The black background and concave lens of the speedometer make it easy to read. The top surface of the panel has an anti-glare finish. I was sold soon as I drove it the first mile. Many of the qualities and features of the new Fury can't really be appreciated so immediately. For example, while the unitized body construction makes for a better overall appearance, it also provides a more firm, stabilized body, resisting squeaks and rattles thousands of miles farther than will a conventional body design. The unibody is even more rust resistant. Full front wheelhouses keep water and mud out of vulnerable pockets around the headlights. We can expect Fury to lead its class in brake size with 202.1 square inches of lining. That is all effective braking area too because the lining is bonded to the shoe which eliminates rivet holes and bevels. There's easier steering with new linkage design. The new design includes a rubber coupling installed at the base of the steering shaft to absorb road noise and vibrations. 
It's the sort of hidden quality we've just seen that will keep Fury owners sold on their cars, as sold and satisfied at 40 and 50,000 miles as they were when they first got behind the wheels of their new Furies. I'll bet a lot of people will buy the station wagon. The Plymouth Fury offers more of what station wagon customers want. Fury wagon design is based on painstaking consumer research and evaluation, assuring that these cars will provide all the features most desired in a multipurpose vehicle. First of all, the new Fury wagons are passenger cars, and that's how they ride, handle, and feel. Besides meeting the requirements of a passenger car, however, the new wagons provide the utility and possess rugged durability and versatility. They're designed for the utmost safety and convenience, bumper to bumper. For instance, the back of the second seat moves forward when folded to increase flat floor space. Running along the top of the seat's rear face is a cargo stop that prevents loads from sliding forward into the back of the front seat. As you can see, there's plenty of foot room for third seat passengers. In two seat models, part of this space becomes a concealed luggage compartment with 10.3 cubic feet of space. An optional lock makes it a safe place to store cameras, binoculars, and other valuables. A hinged panel bridges the gap between lowered tailgate and wagon bed to create a smooth, continuous floor for easy cargo handling. On the right, the spare tire is stored out of the way under an easily removable cover. And look at that cargo space. All 96.8 cubic feet of it. That's almost enough room to let you use this wagon as a moving van. Although distinctively fury in exterior styling, the wagons are about seven inches longer overall, with a 121 inch wheelbase that's two inches longer than the other models. There's a lot more space in these new Fury wagons than in previous Plymouths. In all, 22 models are available in the 1965 Plymouth Fury line. Most are available with either a six or eight cylinder engine. Let's take a look at this all new Highline Plymouth lineup now. Here's Fury 1 with its bright aluminum side molding and a long, lean look. The basic beauty of the Fury body shows up in this series. Fury 2 and the shining aluminum molding running full length across the long, beautiful sweep of the body. Those removable rear fender skirts are a sporty option on Fury 1, 2, and 3, and they're standard on the Sport Fury. Fury 3 has its stately beauty accented by a full length side molding with a paint filled center that is color coordinated with the interior. The paint-filled bars on the front fender are a Fury 3 distinction. Sport Fury has its own distinctive side molding with an engine turned texture instead of a painted area. A traditional Sport Fury styling mark is carried on with the three tricolor bars on the front fender. Those twin tail lamps and backup lights are standard on both Fury 3 and Sport Fury. Show Plymouth Fury your Highline models in 1965. Isn't it beautiful? It's just grand. It looks, oh, so muscular. That's all, car. Compare Fury to competition. Cleanest lines on the road. They say it has a 119-inch wheelbase. Man, that's a big car. It's so roomy. Demonstrate, Fury. The ride is like floating on air. Pick up. Why, it pushes you right back in your seat. Visibility's terrific, all the way around. I was sold soon as I drove the first mile. There are 60 models in the Plymouth lineup for 1965. They're divided up among four great Plymouths. The fine, compact Valiant. The roomy Belvedere family car. The unique Barracuda. And for extra roominess and luxury for people who already own Highline Plymouths. For the best looking car in the low price field. The car is Fury. Fury.